Hi folks and welcome to my class. I thought I would share with you a mixed media piece that uh, I'll create with you. And I'm just using a small canvas and ex actually it's a canvas that I'm recycling. I didn't like what I had originally done so I have just painted over it with uh, gesso. And the paints that I'm going to be using are golden. They're heavy body paints so they come in the jar or the bottle and I've chosen for this project the colors of blues and purples that sit beside each other on the color wheel so here I'm using a golden cobalt teal and I really like this color lately I don't know I've been using it uh, in quite a few projects so I've dried the cobalt teal and now I'm into the next stage of where I'm going to lay down my stencils. So I've just chosen some favorite stencils. And in this case, I'm using coarse molding paste. Coarse because it's very um, gritty, almost like sand. So it's very gritty. Molding paste because molding paste will retain the shape of um, the image that I'm putting down. So in this case, with this particular stencil, I'm laying the molding paste down quite thickly. Uh, thickly? Is that a word? Uh, quite thick. Because I want it to be raised uh, significantly off the substrate. I am adding another uh, bit of molding paste to another area of the canvas. Now with another stencil that I like, I'm going to apply the molding paste but in a very thin, thin layer so that it hardly raises off the surface. I let that molding paste dry overnight for 24 hours because I want to make sure that the molding paste has cured all the way through. And once it's dry, I've just uh, brushed on another layer of the cobalt teal. So now I'm ready for the next layer down on my substrate and I'm going to use a rubber stamp. Now the rubber stamp, um, you could use any rubber stamp that you want. This one happens to be the favorite, and I think I only got it for a dollar fifty at the craft store. It's got a picture of a butterfly on it, and it simply says, "Share the moments that bring you joy," which really resonates with me. So, like I say, you can use any stamp that you want. Now, uh, in this case, I'm going to continue using paint as opposed to ink. Uh, I really like using paint in my mixed media uh, when I'm rubber stamping. So I'm simply brushing over the stamp with ultramarine violet and in this case I'm using a fluid uh, because I don't want the paint to go on too thickly. Uh, I want a very light transfer. Now you'll notice that I apply the rubber stamp uh, in a different manner than you would normally think of using a rubber stamp. I'm applying the canvas to the stamp as opposed to the, uh, as opposed to the stamp to the canvas. So I turn my canvas over and I really lay down and push that canvas piece onto my rubber stamp and that ensures that I get a very very clean image, no broken image. I have found a stash of uh, purple and blue flowers, um, so I'm just going to lay them down. And uh, to balance my project, balancing a project is very important. I've got my stencils on the right. The embellished uh, flowers um, are, I've got in the top left-hand corner. And my stamp uh, is directing my eye into the center of the canvas. And that's why I put my rubber stamp on an angle. There I've just simply applied a button to the center of my flower. Now the th next thing I'm going to do is start adding a frame around my canvas. Uh, so I've chosen some washi tape. Uh, this one here is a very light violet and you can see up in the top right hand corner I've got a very dark purple washi tape. So what I'm going to do is mask off my stamp. I only want to impress the one word share. So I'm masking off everything else on this stamp with some masking tape. I take some, uh, I'm going to take some 
ultramarine blue, a liquid, golden, and I'm just simply going to brush that on to the rubber stamp that uh, simply says share. And I'm going to impress that one word onto my washi tape. And then I'm going to use my washi tape to help frame my project. Now the funny part here, I thought I was being smart. I laid down my washi tape, which as you know has an adhesive backing to it. Uh, I thought I'd be smart and lay it down on my palette paper so that I could pull it off easily. Except what you'll see in a minute is that idea simply did not work. Uh, I pulled the palette paper off with the tape and so that idea was soon trashed. So you live and learn. So what I'm going to do here uh, next is throw out this piece of washi tape and lay down another piece of washi tape but this time on my plastic painting mat there you go on my plastic painting mat so that when I pull it off I still have my adhesive on the back of the washi tape so I'm just going to repeat the process ultramarine blue uh, back onto the rubber brushed back onto the rubber stamp and my rubber stamp and press down onto my washi tape now I can pull it off and it'll come off properly so that I can re-adhere that tape to my canvas. That's why I like using the paint when I'm using a rubber stamp because it tends to dry a lot quicker than ink. So now I'm going to start thinking about how I want to build a frame around my canvas and I want to make sure that that word share is pointing in towards the canvas as opposed to pointing away from the center. That's very important. And so I've now um, joined those two pieces of stenciled area on the right. I've joined them together with the washi tape and in the bottom left hand corner I'm applying the third piece of washi tape. So I'm going to take my dark violet now, my purple washi tape, and I'm going to cut a strip of that and then off that strip I'm going to cut down the middle so that I have a long thin piece of tape because this is a very dark color so I don't want to overpower my canvas so I just need a little strip there in the corner to build that corner and so now I've got a corner to the canvas and this next piece okay now do I want it down there no I've changed my mind yeah I don't like it there so I'm going to change my mind and put it up at the top um, and that now connects the stencil image with the flower so now I virtually got a frame all the way around my canvas and you'll see in a minute how I bring all of those pieces together. I'm now using, I'm back to my heavy bodied paints and I'm using a ultramarine blue and an old scruffy brush and I'm scruffing on the blue paint onto my stenciled areas and while I'm doing that I'm also uh, building a, a border around the entire canvas. There again I'm enhancing the frame of my canvas. Now to smooth the lines around um, this here blue that I'm putting down, I don't want any strong lines. So I'm taking a sponge and I'm blending the dark blue into the cobalt blue. I'm painting right over the washi tape here and I'm building up that frame. So you can see with putting down the washi tape I've got some um, areas that are a little bit darker than if I just applied the ultramarine blue. I'll just enhance that there side of the frame, that or side of the canvas.
So I'm kind of smushing it around the paint uh, on my canvas. I don't want any sharp lines of blue. So I'm kind of using the brush as well as the wet sponge to merge that dark blue into the cobalt. Right now it's at the ugly stage um, where it looks like splotches, but you'll see how it all comes together in a minute. Now I'm going to take uh, some ultramarine violet, uh, excuse me, it's cobalt, or excuse me, once again, it's carbon black. And I'm swishing just a tiny bit of carbon black with the ultramarine blue. And now I'm really enhancing the, the borders or the frame of the canvas. So now I've taking, I'm taking some wood cutouts of some butterflies. And I'm just deciding how I want to lay them down. I want them to be flying towards the flower. So now I'm going to use um, some Dilutions ink spray. And I've chosen Funky Fuchsia and crushed grape. So laying the butterflies down on my palette paper, I'm going to give it a shot of both colors. And then what doesn't absorb into the wood, I just lightly tap off onto a paper towel. I'm going to repeat that same process with the same colors on the two smaller butterflies. A shot of dilutions will work. A little bit of color here and a little bit of color there. Wipe it off on the towel and you're left with what has been absorbed into the wood. It's a subtle color, a subtle group of colors together. Now I haven't glued them down yet because first what I want to do is add some shimmer to them. So I'm reaching for my twinkling H2O's and I've chosen iridescent violet and uh, that'll just create uh, provide for a nice shine and some glitter we all have to have bling on our projects so when you're using the H2O's you uh, use uh, a little bit of water with them and they turn into a watercolor and so you can just brush over the butterflies here I'm using uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Seedless Preserves and I'm just tapping the ink pad along the edges of the butterfly to give them a little bit of depth and dimension on the edges. You just got to have that one little extra doodad there. One more little bit of ink. Okay, now I'm happy. Okay, I'm back with my H2O's. And I'm going to use uh, the fluorescent oyster color now. So it's very, very pale beige. And I sponge that, brush that on all over my canvas especially on my stenciled areas. Here I'm just adding some wire uh, to the butterflies uh, for their antenna. And there again I'm using Aileen's glue. And I'm sealing them down on the canvas. And there they are. So the last two things that I did on this painting was to create some harmony and some uniformity and bring all the components together is I splattered some white paint droplets all over the painting and I added some charcoal uh, around the outline of the butterflies so that uh, that provided some depth to the butterflies. 
Here you can see the flowers. I've highlighted them with some twinkling H2Os and I've added that button into the center. Here you can see the washi tape with that word share on it. You can also see the frame of washi tape that I've done in that corner. And you can see the rubber stamp. Here you can see the twinkling H2Os on the molding paste. It just gives them a bit of glimmer and shimmer to the molding paste. And you can also see the sponginess of the molding paste as well. Here you see the center of the canvas and I've just put a little bit of uh, twinkling H2O's on that stenciled area. And you can also see the charcoal that I've put around the butterflies. So thanks for watching folks. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I enjoyed creating it for you.